it is estimated to take 250 really strong people to move 50 tons, but what if there is no space for 250 people or even 50 people? And what if it is 100 ton stone boxes? What then? How in the world do you explain this? These giant stone boxes in Egypt weigh between 40 and 100 tons each. And that's not including their massive stone lids weighing between 50 and 70 tons each. And these gigantic boxes are not made of sandstone or limestone, they are made of a single piece of hard and durable granite. But who made these boxes and more importantly, how? These immense boxes are shoved into such tight spaces in the bedrock that it is difficult to imagine how ancient peoples could have moved them. In fact it would be difficult for people to achieve this today. On open ground moving such boxes would be a matter of more manpower, but when you are talking about spaces that are this narrow question marks arise. Could this have not been made by the ancient Egyptians? In this video we will discuss these question marks and the evidence that the Serapium of Saqqara is not what conventional archaeologists say it is. Nestled in the sands near the great city of Memphis is the Serapium of Saqqara which has captivated historians, archaeologists, and seekers of ancient wisdom for centuries. Conventional researchers say the Serapium of Saqqara is the burial place of sacred Apis bulls, revered as incarnations of the god Ptah. These animals were considered divine, and their burials were of utmost importance to the ancient Egyptians. However, they do not take into account the logistical issues of moving multi-ton granite boxes with multi-ton granite lids. The largest of these boxes is 10 feet tall, weighs well over 100 tons, and is wedged in the corner of this alcove somehow. The mainstream archaeologists say they used wooden sleds to move them, but there is no evidence of this anywhere, and ancient Egypt's wood was very scarce and not very strong, as well as very expensive. And you cannot say they lowered the boxes in through the roof because these chambers and alcoves are carved straight out of the bedrock. Some of the boxes barely fit in the hallways of the Serapium. How did they accomplish this feat thousands of years ago? Another mystery is their precision, specifically in the interior of the boxes. Why would you make the interior more precise than the outside if it is a ceremonial coffin for an apis bull? If it really was for the bulls, why would they make the stone have a mirror-like finish on the inside, where no one would ever see? The precision of these boxes is so extreme that there are reports that when the lid is on they are hermetically sealed. One speculation is that the dynastic Egyptians, upon encountering the Serapium, recognized its sacredness and saw it as a site of immense power and importance. They may have sought to align themselves with the ancient gods and the spiritual legacy of the land by claiming the site as their own. Through their reverence for the Apis bulls and their desire to honor the divine lineage, the dynastic Egyptians became custodians of this sacred place. As the centuries passed and Egypt went through periods of change and turmoil, the significance of the Serapium remained. The ancient Egyptians are said to have carved and shaped these boxes in the chamber because there are some unfinished boxes inside the Serapium. And to do this they are said to have used copper chisels and bronze saws. People today have tried to cut granite using their method and they manage to only cut one centimeter per hour. Now think about the immensity of these boxes and you begin to realize that they could not have done it in this way. There is speculation that these boxes were functional and that is why they are precisely made on the inside and they did not care what they looked like on the outside. Looking at a map of the Serapium of Saqqara, we see that each alcove with a box in it is offset slightly with the one across from it. Could this have to do with the functionality of the boxes? Also the stone used on the boxes is a very hard granite, which is incredibly heavy and difficult to cut in shape. Why would you make it intentionally harder on yourself unless there was a purpose behind it? And that goes back to the layout of the site, why would you make such tight and narrow corridors for these huge boxes? Why would you make it so you could not fit lots of people inside and move them? Perhaps the people who made these boxes possessed a technology that we do not understand and it allowed them to easily move these granite boxes. The ancient Egyptians likely found these huge boxes and knew that they were special because of what I have laid out in this video. They must have known it was impossible for them to do this with their technology and thought the gods had made it and used it for their sacred apis bulls. Most boxes in the Serapium have no writing on them and the ones that do have a crude look to them that does not match the grandeur of the boxes. Lines are not straight and the writing is shallow and not carved deep. If you had the power to carve 100-ton granite boxes and move them in narrow passageways, how could you not make a straight line or carve your writing into the stone? This says to me that the ancient Egyptians repurposed the site for their apis bulls and the mainstream archaeologists attributed it to them. Today there are rumors that Egypt has found more boxes in more chambers at the Serapium, although no official announcement has been made yet. Although the Serapium's true purpose and the methods employed in its construction remain subjects of speculation, one thing is certain. It holds a profound place in the collective consciousness of those fascinated by Egypt's ancient civilization. The precision, grandeur and spiritual significance of the site continue to inspire awe and curiosity.
exploring the Serapium is an invitation to delve into the mysteries of ancient Egypt, to unravel the secrets held within its granite walls. It reminds us that there is much yet to be discovered and understood about our history. Our human history is far more complex and perhaps far older than we have been led to believe. I look forward to more discoveries and information about our collective history coming to light. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.